I've been a stay-at-home mom since 2019. I love that I'm able to be there for their milestones, you know, their first steps, hear their first words. Grateful that I get to teach them their numbers and their letters and their colors. I get to, you know, be there for all the little funny moments and take all the cute pictures and things like that. But I wouldn't be 100% honest with you if I did not share that sometimes it gets very overwhelming being a stay-at-home mom. We don't get a break. There is no lunch time. There is no clock out. It's a 24-7 job. Over the past five or so years that I've been a stay-at-home mom, here are some things that I have found that work for me to help me keep my sanity. Luxurious showers and skin care. Lighting a nice candle, putting um, a shower steamer in the bottom of the shower or um, sprinkling some essential oils in the bottom of the shower and letting that steam up and using some really good like body soap or body wash and like some body scrub and turning the lights out and turning on music. Oh my gosh, that feels so amazing and just be turning around in that shower like a little rotisserie chicken, okay? Like... <laughs> Next thing that helps is chai tea lattes and good food. My husband will tell you if he leaves the house and he's like, you want me to bring you something? One of the first things I'll say is chai tea latte, please. <laughs> because I don't know what it is about chai tea lattes, but chai tea lattes, just they make me happy they make me smile um i am out and i am eating some chick-fil-a and it's good it's amazing okay got me a little milkshake it's good so you know eating some good food and e even with the kids you know i'll go get a little something something and it just it, it makes it better or i'll have my husband bring it home and it it makes me smile opening up the windows or going outside and just breathing in fresh air. Oh my gosh, like the mental like clarity and freedom that just breathing in fresh air does for me. It just, it feels like a weight, you know, is coming off my shoulder. Sometimes it's like being in the house, um, it starts to feel like claustrophobic. Um, sometimes it feels like hard to breathe e even with the windows open in our home sometimes it just feels very dark but going outside and just being I mean it just it, it just it lights up my world <laughs> it's quiet time Woo! quiet time <laughs> what happens during quiet time is I shut off everything in the house we're not playing music we're not um, watching TV we're not playing with any toys that make any loud noises and songs. We're not doing any of that. We're gonna turn off these lights and we're just gonna be quiet. <laughs> and sometimes quiet time is, you know, you can go to your room, you can play with toys, you can lay down, you can bring mommy a book and we can read together. Because sometimes I know for me, I get very overstimulated when there's just a lot happening. Like, and at some point during the day, it just feels like the TV is so loud, like I can't even think. And then it's like, you got a baby crying over here. This one wants some juice. <laughs> and then like in the background, you hear like the faint sound of like this toy that just won't stop. It just keeps playing the song or playing the sound. And it's just like, ah! <laughs> it just drives me crazy sometimes. Lighting candles. And I've already mentioned candles when it comes to like the everything shower but candles, oh my gosh, candles are my best friend. And it's not even just about, you know, just solely candles, but even like the wallflowers, wall plugins, um, even the little plugins in the car. Like I am just at that point where it's just like every space that I'm in, like I just need to just smell good. Like I don't want to smell no stale air. I don't want to smell diapers. I don't want to smell. I don't want to smell any bodily fluids like I want to smell something good I don't want to smell last night's dinner I, I don't want to smell I no. I want to smell something good I like to color yes I like to color and I think maybe it's just like an artistic expression type of thing 
Um, and then it's also something that the kids can do as well. And just to focus on something other than just like what's happening around us. Like now I'm focusing on, ooh, you know, that flower would be pretty as this color. And you know, I'm focusing on, okay, let me color inside the lines. You know, it just, it gives my, my brain a mental break from whatever, you know, is happening. And the last thing that I do to keep my sanity as a stay-at-home mom is I leave my kids, as you can see. <laughs> I'm out at this park eating lunch and I'm gonna go for a walk in just a little bit by myself. Um, left them at home with their daddy or let them go with their grandparents. Absolutely. And I know that there are some mothers out there who, you know, are just like, uh-uh, I need my kids with me all the time, da-da-da. And, I, and I'm, I'm like that too, in a way. You know, I want my kids with me. And I like to have my kids with me because I'm very particular about my children. I'm very particular about the way their hair is combed, about, you know, the way their clothes are. And like, I'm just, I'm very particular about how I speak to my children and just handle them. Some advice that I got from a very close friend of mine when we had our first child is that, you know, yes, you have a particular way that you like things done, a particular way that you like to handle things. You're supposed to because you're the parent, right? But when you leave your children with people that you trust, like grandparents, maybe your siblings or cousin, whatever, have peace with the fact that they love your child too. And they would never do anything to intentionally hurt or harm your child because they love them as well. And so while they may not do things exactly the way that you do them, that doesn't mean that they are out to hurt them, right? It just means that they have a different approach, but they love your child and they're gonna take care of your child the best way that they know how. And so whenever it comes time to leave the children or um, you know they go to their grandparents' house or whatever, that's what plays in my head. And that's what helps me to, you know, to, to take this time to step away and to get a break and to um, clear my mind and just breathe and just do something for me. Like, like it is so hard for me <laughs> to leave my babies because I'm, I'd be looking at pictures on my phone. I'd be calling and, and everything because um, I love my babies and I'm with them all the time. And I don't, I'm, I don't ever want to be away from them, but I know that I need to take that time. Um, just to do something for me right because you get as a stay-at-home mom and i think just a mom in general too even if you're not stay at home um so much of our identity gets wrapped up in our children and we become um enmeshed with our children where there's like no separation but like you're still a person like, like you were somebody before you had children right and you're somebody with children and you'll be something after your children have grown up and have left the house so if if your entire identity is just wrapped up in just being a mom and being um with your children you know all the time when they grow up and they leave the house who are you going to be then you would be unrecognizable because you haven't taken the time to cultivate you. That is my list of things that I do to help me stay sane as a stay-at-home mom. Um, I did write a blog post about this a couple, I think it was last year sometime. And so the list has definitely evolved since I wrote that. But if you're interested in reading that blog post on my website, I will definitely link that in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, and maybe even share this with a stay-at-home mom. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.